are God's children. We are His people. We are His light in the world. We have been chosen. Welcome to the Joy of the Lord Show. This week's show is brought to you by the RIC Church, anonymous donors, and supporters and viewers like you. Our musical director is Christian Caulfield. And now, to introduce this week's special guest, it's your host, Father Richard Hill. Welcome. Welcome to the Joy of the Lord show again. Thank you for 20. having us into your hearts and homes. We're uh, happy that you're here. We're happy to be here. As a matter of fact, I think we're happy to be anywhere today. Uh, glad you decided to join us. We're going to try to make sure that you get a chance to learn something today, hopefully, and maybe we will too. So um, basically, we have a gratitude section each and every week, and we'll go ahead and do it now because I'm halfway embarrassed to have Lammy Pie on again. But the kids want Lammy Pie to get more exposure. I think they're probably getting ready to send her to Hollywood or something. I'm not really sure. But Lammy Pie has really let all this go to her head. Thank you, Lammy Pie, for taking your valuable time to come and visit with us. As I have told the kids several times, we can't just do the same thank you or thank you bunches or something that we've done before. We need to come up with a new idea each week. Well... Uh, I don't write this stuff, I just do it. The kids uh, saw to it that I got these. These are grapes. I guess you can tell that. They, uh, I guess someone washed them. Hmm. Anyway, they were probably dusty from hanging around wherever artificial grapes hang around and uh, <coughs> dripping on me here. But anyway, so I wondered what in the world I was doing with grapes for the gratitude section. I thought we might be doing again, thank you a bunch. I don't know if you all saw that one, but we've done that. So I said, no, we can't do that. And Lammy Pie is a little female sheep, so we have thank you, E-W-E, -E, thank you. And I said, we can't do thank you bunches again. We did that with bananas. So instead of thank you bunches, we have you are the grapist. <laughs> I don't write this. I just deliver it. Okay, thank you kids for figuring out how to get Lammy Pie on the show again. Who are we saying you are the grapist to? It's a little bit complicated, so I'll try to say it very quickly. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are not very happy with some people in law enforcement. I have been that at times. Uh, I can tell you a quick little story I was driving down the highway 175 here south of Dallas one time with a young man who I had taken in to our home to try to get him back a little bit less like a heathen, a little bit more like a Christian or a human being. And uh, there was two semis at Dead Man's Curve blocking two out of three, uh, two wrecker semis, semis for wreckers, and they're parked in Dead Man's Curve, talking to each other, We're laughing, they had the windows rolled down and they're joking back and forth. Traffic's backed up all the way to downtown. We finally get up there and they finally finish whatever they're talking about. One of them takes off and, and as we pass him, of course, this young man who's sitting on my passenger side decides to use sign language to convey his feelings about the amount of time we wasted waiting to get up to this particular unnecessary blockage of traffic. Well, being a priest, I was very glad that we didn't have the church signs on the side of the van at that time because he was very animated and very uh, obvious and loud with what he said. And the uh, record drivers, um, I'd never say who they were, um, Tyler Boyce record, but I'd never say who. They were uh, evidently well connected because there was two or three more wreckers down the road that came on and they were running us off the road and, and motioning for us to pull over like as if there was going to be some type of an altercation or something. And I tried to get off on just an exit 
uh, when they were trying to squeeze me off the road, the, these two other large wreckers. And uh, I took off and got boxed in. I didn't realize how many of them there were. And one little five-foot guy with a six-foot attitude hops out of a truck and runs around to my door, and he's screaming and yelling and jumping up and down. And, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not really very upset at that time. You know, I've been married a long time, so you're not scaring me. But anyway, I, I love my wife. That was a joke. That was a joke. All you ladies out there, all your wives out there, that was a joke. And bad one, but it was a joke. So anyway, um, it, it didn't bother me much. I had my wheels turned, and I was going to, so I finally ran a red light, went around him, took off. And he was well-connected, called the police. Police pulled me out of my car, threw me up against the side of the car, and read me the ride act, threw everything out of the trunk, threw everything out of the side, you know, and they'd been called by whoever this record driver was slammed me up against the side of the car and slammed him up against the side of the car and turned our pockets out and was setting everything on the car. All my neighbors were going by. You know, oh, hi, hi how are you? Yeah, it's good to see you too. Uh, always just were practicing for a play. They didn't buy it. But anyway, and so after all this, after they finally got through kind of roughing us up a little bit and they finally left, gave us a hard time told us they stopped us because the tail light was out and it wasn't. I tried to explain to this young man, he was really upset then, oh, these policemen, all oh, this. Let me explain something to you. I told him, and I think this all the time, thank God for the police. The deputy sheriff, some of them are, are corrupt, some of them will tow your car. I've had my car towed when it shouldn't have been and had to pay a lot of money. There's all types of bad things in this world, but you ought to see all the bad things that would be without these people, you know, and there's so many good ones that risk their life every day and put up with the bad attitude from people. Uh, I mean, I told that young man when we got back in that car, it took us a while to put everything back in the car, didn't want to get a ticket for littering, that would have been next, I guess. But I told him, I said, son, we're going to say a prayer for their protection. And, of course, he couldn't understand it. So it's important to understand. It doesn't matter if you've had a bad experience with some law enforcement. There's been a lot of people who have. It doesn't matter. What matters is the problems you haven't had because of them. A very good friend of our son is a police officer, and he risks his life every day. And he's a very nice young man, very polite. Not at all like the ones I ran into that day, and I could mention their names, but I won't. Anyway, you just have to understand that you can't pick and choose and say, everybody has to live up to a perfect standard for you. So for the vast majority of law enforcement, the vast, vast, vast majority of the time, thank you for what I don't have to put up with because of you. Thank you. So for the law enforcement, Hey, guys, you are the grapest, okay? The grapest. Don't hold that against me. That was the kid's idea. All right, Lammy Pie. Back you go. I wonder what it's going to be next week. I don't know if the kids are going to be able to come up with something else new with a prop for Lammy Pie to be on the show again, but we'll see. You'll have to tune in next week to see for sure. Okay, we're trying a little different format today. I'm going to talk for a little while uh, about an idea, and then we'll go to the music, and then we'll come back from the music, and I'll ask Christian, our music director, uh, through the magic of television, to come over and sit with me at the table, and, and we'll have a discussion. So, uh, I've been told that we need to do a little bit more teaching, but I think you all are smart enough to get your own lessons out of the truth. So we're just going to kind of talk about the truth, and we're not going to be real preachy, and we're not going to be real teachy. We're just going to try to, to talk about the truth a little bit. The truth of the matter is there's too many Christians out there right now who are frustrated. There's too many Christians out there right now who are disappointed, brokenhearted, upset. And what I wanted to do was just take one little idea and talk to you about it. I'm not going to 
throw 15 or 20 Bible verses at you, but if you want to write us, I'll be happy to back up what I'm saying with Scripture. Basically, you cannot be disappointed, you cannot be frustrated unless you had an expectation that had particulars. Now, let me, let me give you an example. If you expected to go to law school and you didn't get to go to law school, <laughs> that's a joke for me. You know, I didn't graduate magnum cum laude. I graduated thank the laude, you know. <laughs> thank the laude, I graduated. But anyway, or if you expected to get a contract or if you expected to get a job or if you expected somebody to love you forevermore, and that's not the way it happened. You had expectations that had particulars in the physical world attached to them. And it didn't happen. <clears throat> so if you stop and think about it, God never really promised us, you know, well, I have one friend in Oklahoma City. If he's watching, he'll know who he is. God never promised us the perfect blonde, okay? There were two, he never promised us two ski -doos. He never promised us a white picket fence around a cottage at the lake. He promised us love, peace, and joy, kindness, patience, long-suffering, meekness, mildness, uh, self-discipline, and self-control, which is sanity. It's all one word at the end there, self-discipline, self-control. The Greeks call that sanity. So whatever you're disappointed in, let me, let me explain, or, or you're frustrated in, let me explain. You're not seeing the other options because you're tied up with what it was you wanted exactly. You're not seeing the other people. You're not seeing the other possibilities, the other jobs, the other ways to make money, the other ways to, to be happy. And if you go to the Lord with too many particulars, I have to ask you, who's the God of your relationship with God? Shouldn't it be Him? And if it is, then shouldn't we be asking Him for the results instead of the particulars? I mean, I sat through two sermons that started with, let's say you want God to give you a pink Cadillac, here's how you get him to do it. And, and I'm serious, I had to sit through them because I'd been asked to go, and I didn't have the authority in those groups to stand up and throw books at the guy, but I wanted to. In my mind, I did. I, I really did. I, I had a long talk with the people that brought those speakers in afterwards, but... How about if we don't ask God for a pink Cadillac? If you need transportation, why do you need transportation? Normally, it's so you can go to a job or you can go to people or you can go do something. Well, there's a deeper need. Back up to that need and pray and ask God to fill that need. I mean, if Satan's the one that is really good at giving you exactly, specifically what you ask and in making you miserable. I mean, we have stories all over the place of that. We have literature about it. Satan is excellent at giving you exactly what you want and at not bringing you what you want. You'll be pretty miserable uh, if you get, if you sit down and outline your life and you get everything you outlined, then I can practically guarantee you you're going to have an empty life because one thing you can't put on there is meaning unless you go to the Lord and say, give my life meaning. And then don't argue with him about how he does it. He's almost always going to do it in an area and in a way you don't like. And let me repeat that. God's almost always going to answer your prayers in an area and in a way you don't like. Why? Because it'll be obedience then. You'll be following him. He won't be following you. You won't be using God as a brick in your wall to build your future, you'll be offering for him to use you as a brick in his wall to build his future for the world. And I think what you'll find then is much more love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, long-suffering, meekness, mildness, self-discipline, and self-control, which is sanity. You, you'll find much more th of that in places and areas you never expected. So take your frustration, take your disappointments, back up and look at what you really wanted and ask God for that and let him figure out the details and let him order the steps for your feet. 
Now, we're going to have a song that helps you to understand that. It's a song Christian Cofield wrote about Worthy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb, Holy is the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb, Worthy is the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb, Holy is the Lamb. Sick in the week and turn the water into wine. He killed the leper and raised the dead. He cast the demons into pits of real milk, old man. Holy is the Lamb, holy is the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb, holy is the Lamb. Thank you, Christian. Wow. Worthy is the Lamb. Okay, I'm going to ask Christian to come join us at the table, and um, we're going to talk a little bit more about some ideas that center around what we were talking about before the song. And see, worthy is the Lamb. Well, worthy of what? Well, honor and respect and so on. But he's also worthy of you following him. I mean, so many of us say we're Christians, but we have all these grandiose plans for ourselves and our future. We have a three-year plan, a five-year plan, a seven-year plan. We have a mission statement. We have all types of big plans for our life. It's difficult to be following the Lord when he makes sudden changes if you're totally locked in to what you want to do. Um, Christian, why don't we talk a little bit about your life, and why don't you tell us how's it worked for you to give up your uh, your plans and just somewhat start following the Lord? Well, for me, um, you know, I wanted to be a big rock star when I was a kid and started playing instruments when I was in fifth grade, about 10 years old. And um, over time, as the Lord, um, you know, basically took my life over, <laughs> I learned that uh, my plans weren't a hill of beans compared to his plans for me, and I've been super blessed to try to attempt to follow his plans for me. Sounds good. Do me a favor. Take the other collar and put it up, too, so that you look like <laughs> Elvis, okay? There we go. I feel, I feel a little bit better. See, he's back in his rocking days now. See? There you go. That, 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 that looks a little bit better. Well, you said as God took over your life, as, mm -hmm. the, as the Lord, I know you're talking about the Lord Jesus, takes yeah. over your life. But you had to give it to him. You bet. I mean, you, you could have said no. You bet. 
You, you, you really easily could have. As a matter of fact, you did in some areas for quite a while, right? Oh, yeah, that's absolutely true. <clears throat> you know, from, from finances to uh, trying to, to create a band that would be, you know, a big rock star band to, uh, to work, um, to go into school. You know, I, I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to do with life, and I felt like I was being ripped apart. I was saying, I'm trying to do ministry, yet I'm trying to do business. I don't know how to do either one of them very well. I need help, Lord. And I, I got out, down on my knees and prayed, and here, here you come. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. You've got to look out when somebody like me is an answer to prayer. <laughs> You've you got to wonder, what type of prayers was he praying? No, really, the idea of not being able to do what you know you have to do, that's, one of, that's, that's what brings you to Christ in the first place. So as you become more and more serious with the Lord, that's also what's going to drive you closer and closer to him. So why don't you give us an idea? Um, as you got closer to the Lord, you lost more and more control of how things were going to be, didn't you? You bet. Um, it allowed me to, to, to not be, trying to not be my own God as much. My, me being the God of the relationship with, with Jesus. Um, as I got more out of the driver's seat, and more into the back of the ambulance mm -hmm. rather than up there, uh, you know, co-piloting with Jesus. And Jesus would be the driver, um, to use a, an example like you've shared before. Um, my life changed, and it was better. Um, the, my expectations have become less. My, my life has been more of a discovery um, rather than invention. Um, the inventions that I've created have just, you know, they almost drove me crazy mentally and everything and financially and physically and um, you know, health problems and those type of things, but trying to follow the Lord um, has been really beneficial, giving me his peace, his fruit of the Spirit, as you talked about. Well, let's, let's be really plain about this. I don't want to mislead anyone out there. <clears throat> Oftentimes, all this wonderful, glorious, you know, financial blessings and so on come after the problem. A lot of times we've put ourselves into a bad situation and then we just throw it on the Lord and say, here, you handle it, take care of it. And he normally does. But don't at all be surprised if you don't have to stand in faith for a little while for it to come through. Did you run into any of that? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's been a, about seven, eight years of standing with, um, with the Lord holding me up. Um, and it's taken time and uh, constantly looking at budgets and trying to cut costs and um, those type of things in terms of financial uh, success, um, which required a lot of discipline. And there's times that I just I didn't want to do it because it just took so much work. And well, we finally, after what three years of kind of arguing over and massaging the budget and um, trying to get it in shape um, to where I was right side up instead of upside down, <laughs> it started coming together. And it's amazing, um, you know. I've I always thought that we got a couple thoughts here. I always thought that um, I would never be able to, you know, do a true tithe and offering. And um, really what happened is once I, I, you convinced me that it would be a great thing to do um, based on what the, the Lord says in the scriptures saying that, you know, basically test him in that. And um, the, only, the only place in the Bible that says test me in this, and I'll open up a floodgate so wide and heavy that Blessings flow from heaven and my cup overfloweth, but I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But uh, Yeah, I do that when I don't remember the exact wording to it. <laughs> 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 but that's good enough. I mean, that's exactly what it says. You bet. You bet. So, well, but also at the same time, I don't want you to give them the impression that it was seven years of hell before anything improved. You right. saw improvement from the first day. Improvement from the first day. Um, also, as a result, it took a lot of stress off of my back, so basically I could have finances to go and do ministry type work. Um, I didn't feel like I was being imploded anymore, you know, trying to make a, a car payment, a house payment, and all these, these things, that, that the trappings of this world. Sounds good to me. So you started following the Lord. What we say, one of our teachings is following Jesus involves discovery, not invention. If you're inventing things, if you're putting them together, if you're imagining, I, I'm sure that God has some people doing that because there's so many people out there doing it. And they'll point to, you know, numbers and dollars and say that that proves they're right. 
I, that's not what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you how to be happy, how to be fulfilled, how to, how to be relaxed, how to love your life, how to let the Lord love you so much that you get healing, that that love that Christ sends you overflows out of you to others. It doesn't take a five-year plan. It doesn't take a, a budget. You don't have to have a business plan and go to a bank and get a loan to do that. What you do need to do is quit trying to lead God. And so many people say, oh, I'm not. And, and I'm, brothers and sisters, I love you. Quit trying to lead God. You have no idea how many places that you're, you think you're chasing God and you finally will stop and then he'll catch you. I'll repeat that. That's, that's the truth. I can't tell you how many times I've had people just stand still and know that he is God and pray to him and start centering on the life he has for you, a life of scripture reading, a life of prayer, a life of love, a life of servants for others, you know, a, a life of being more than you can be, but letting him be the more than you can be through you. And that's what I want for you. I want it so badly. I want it for myself more than I have it, but whenever I don't have it, it's because I'm inventing. I'm coming up with what God ought to do. I have expectations of him. I do my part. Well, he never signed the contract. God makes a terrible servant. And that's the truth. He's God and he's used to that. And he just won't get over it. He won't quit being God in the relationship with you. So you, that slot's filled. You can't take it. You can't take it up. You can't be the God of the relationship you have with God. So, as he said, he would have obedience rather than sacrifice, and rebellion is his witchcraft. An awful lot of Christians don't know how much witchcraft they have in their relationship with Jesus because they got all these big, grandiose plans with specifics. And then we're going to gather 237 shoes, because that's the shoes, and we're going to go to Mexico, we're going to cross here, and we're going to go there, and we're going to do this. And we're gonna... Yeah, you have to have plans and try them. See if they'll work. But if they work, great. If they don't work, be ready to turn right or left as God shows you and follow him and be happy in it. Love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, long-suffering, meekness, mildness, self-discipline, and self-control. Look for that. Don't look for the specifics in your mind that success means. Look for where Jesus is. Look for where you feel him. Spend more time there. Spend more time in the love of the Lord. Let him heal you by letting him love you. Go inside yourself with him until you overflow with him and then share him with others. But whatever you do, try not to buy any program that tells you what he ought to do because he's pretty sure he already knows. And that's the final word. Thank you for watching the Joy of the Lord show. Tune in next Saturday at 6 to share the joy of the Lord with us again. We have been chosen.